In this video, I'll review a couple of things from our first lecture on August the 19th, specifically modeling rules, goal seek, and maybe get into data tables a little bit. Recall that to introduce the modeling rules, I said let's build a multiplication table like we used in third grade to learn our, our multiplication. I said this is a great use for the mouse. Normally I don't like the mouse, but you notice I typed the one and the two, and then I went back up got on the one, held down the shift key, and hit the down arrow so that I could select both the one and the two. Now I'm going to pick up my mouse, put it on the lower right hand corner until it turns to a plus sign, and I'm going to drag that down until I see the number 10 pop up. And so I've auto filled up to 10, which was probably the fastest way I could do that. Now I'm going to put the mouse back down, hit control C to copy, up arrow, right arrow, Alt E S E to paste special and transpose. That last E was got me the transpose because it was underlined. And then I'll hit return and I'll hit enter. And now I've pasted across the top. So to illustrate the first modeling rule, let's go see what it is. Is never use a number when a formula or reference will work. I said let's uh Let's come in here and I tried to agitate you and say equals 1 plus 1 because we all know that in our multiplication table that cell needs to hold 1 plus 1. And I got the right answer. But the problem is if we decided to put a different number going into that formula, like a 2, we wouldn't do that on a multiplication table, but we might do that in a financial model. Notice that our answer no longer reflects the new input. That's because we used numbers instead of references. If we had referred to cell C2, then our answer would have changed. And so that's why we have the first modeling rule. Never use a number when a formula or reference will work. So let's go back and fix that. So this time, if I said equal left arrow times up arrow, now I'm referring to the cell to the left and the cell above, and I still get the right answer regardless of what how the input changes. Modeling rule number one. So I'd like to copy that down because I don't want to have to type the answer, but notice I am not getting the right answers anymore because when I hit F2 to look at that formula, I'm just looking at the cell to the left and the cell above. I wanted that red cell to remain stationary at row two, and I wanted the blue cell to follow me up and down column B, but when I copy over, I want it to remain stationary on column B. So let's go back and fix that. I believe you guys told me that I would need a dollar sign in front of the B to hold that blue cell stationary when I copied left to right, and that I would need a dollar sign in front of the 2 to hold that red cell stationary on row 2 as I copied up and down. Now I could type in those dollar signs, but it, much, it is much easier to hit the F4 key at the top of your keyboard. And every time I hit that, it cycles through. So I'm going to cycle through to dollar B with no dollar in front of the C. So the way we say that is absolute reference to B, relative reference to row 3. Then I'm going to use the right arrow a couple of times, hit that F4 key some more times until I find the combination I'm looking for there. Now, if I copy that down, looks like I'm getting the right answers. And if I copy it over, it looks like I'm getting the right answers. So we're using absolute references wisely so that we can copy and paste broadly. Let's go ahead and fill in our table. Just holding down the shift key after I hit control C and the arrows and control V to paste. And we filled it in. All I've got those highlighted, those are really the outputs of our model. Normally we would not have 100 outputs but for this simple example. And I'd like to go, I'm going to hit Alt H to pull up the home ribbon. And hit J to pull up these cell styles over here. I'm going to use my down and right arrow keys, or just my down arrow key, to format those as outputs. I want to do the same thing with these inputs. I'm going to hit Control Shift down, 
to select them. Alt H J to pull up the formatting. Use my down and right arrows to get that. Now I want to go up and over with the arrow keys. I could hit Alt H J and try to find the input again, or I could simply hit Control Y to redo the last formatting thing that I did. And now it's a little bit more clear about what's going into our calculation, the input cells, and what's coming out of our calculation, these output cells. That'll become much more clear in the next example. But that gets us through the modeling rules. OK, now let's build a model uh, for division. I think if you take a dividend and divide it by a divisor, then you get a quotient. And I confess I had to look on Google to get those words. But if I had 6 divided by 3, I should get 2. And this is where our modeling rule number 3 comes in. Let's go ahead and format with an Alt-HJ. Those as inputs and these, this one as an output. So it's very clear when somebody looks at our spreadsheet, okay, well, these are the numbers that we could type in, and that's the answer we're going to get. We'd never want to type a number into the quotient, but if I typed you know, 12 in, as the dividend, then everything would update nicely. So that's our modeling rule number three for formatting, and it's a good time to talk about goal seek. If I said, well, what would I have to divide 12 by to get 6 as a quotient? I could do an Alt TG to goal seek and say set C4. I'm going to hit tab equal to 6 by changing C2. And goal seek says, oh, well, you can get that answer with a, a 6. You asked for a 6. We got you a 6. Do you like that? You want to keep it? Yes. So that's how goal seek works. Now let's look at how a data table works. First, let's build this thing the long way. We'll go back and do a division table with one, two, shift, and uh, down arrow, and then we'll use our mouse to get to 10, control C, up and over, alt E, S, E, to transpose. So if these are our dividends, and these are our divisors, we want the dividend. I'm going to hit up 4 until that looks the way I want it to, divided by left arrow, the divisor, and I'm going to hit up 4 until it looks the way I want to. Cop, enter. Control C to copy. Control V to paste. Let's check this. 8 divided by 2 is in fact 4. Uh, 6 divided by 8 is in fact 3 quarters. So yeah, I think we got our math correct there. But let's talk about how to do this dividend table using a what-if data table. So I'm going to copy these and do an alt -ESV to paste as values. So we know what the answer we're looking for is. Go back and delete our calculations. And let's use an Excel what-if data table. As you know from all the YouTube videos you've been watching now on data tables, we need a row of inputs that we can put into our model and or a column of inputs that we can put into our model. And when we do, we will get a some array of outputs from that. But we have to tell the data table what the output we care about is because the model might have multiple outputs. Uh, so we put that when we have both a row and a column of inputs, then we put the output right here. And the way we do that is refer that to the output. That's why I love to have those outputs formatted. Then I can do a control shift down and over, do an alt DT for a data table. And it says, what is your row input cell? That means, what cell do you want me to put each of these numbers into? Well, I want you to put those into C2, and I'll hit tab. I want you to put the column inputs into C3. So that will put all the division div dividends into cell C2 and all of the divisors into cell 3, one combination at a time. So Excel is going to go through 100 iterations, putting every combination here, looking at the output, and then putting the output in the appropriate cell. 
and notice we get the same answers as we had down here.